If you should awaken everyone and welcome to another episode of the soul and the body tv show i'm your host in kurt williams jr author metaphysician spiritualist and hermeticist and we're here to bring you another episode of the book reading now we are about to go into some very interesting chapters chapter three is called material world let me explain we are at a point now where God has just selected a gender. He decided to be a male, not because he wanted to, but because he wanted to have a female counterpart. Yeah. He wanted a female counterpart. So, this particular gender selection was purposeful because the ethereal realm that he created first became very boring to the angels that lived, the angel spirits that lived there. There was no type of gain, reward to be had. It was just an existence without purpose. He selected Mother Nature, and then they created the universe. They created the universe because now you can have a system of matter complex, meaning things that are solid. Now, things that are solid are things that can decay if you don't take care of them. And then there's such a thing as time. Time is very important here because without time, you have nothing to gauge existence by. So, we'd like to show you chapter three. Material World. Chapter 3 Material Worlds. Since it was the male gender that was chosen, God could now be called a he, and he would create the necessary she. And so it came to be that God would desire unto himself an infinite companion. He would call her Mother Nature, since she was naturally made of mostly him. The two would outline responsibilities and manage said responsibilities like the creators that the two grand creators are. One of the many purposes of creating a gender counterpart would be to create offspring. But what would the first offspring of God and the mother of all nature consist of? The necessity of the existence of Mother Nature prompted the necessity of an existence of a new state of reality a system contrary to that of a completely spiritual existence, a different state of being, a system of matter complex. Such a system would require upon itself a compound state of matter, an expanded multiplex, a system of order, non-entropy that creates separation of physical substance, 
It would also require a mainframe of extraordinary and unlimited peripherals, capable of infinite calculations on both the atomic and subatomic levels. It would begin with a simple binary system. Numbers, ones, and zeros would be used to distinguish orientation of individual particles in its exacting positions in space. This existence would be corporeal existing of matter. Time would also be required, for all things in a corporeal world must have a beginning and an end. This system would enable each particle to have a particular role in its existence. A role according to its purpose in time, place, and space. Cycles of measure would calculate spiritual value. Particles would be valued on its own purpose. Its purpose would be to elevate its spiritual qualities and its eventual capacity to become self-aware. Once a spirit reaches a certain point, laws would be given with expectations according to the state or level of awareness of such law. These laws will be universal and fixed non-changeable regardless of insubordinate civilizations and their malcontent predetermined orientation. All beings comprised of living matter must be connected through the matrix of the mainframe and must calculate to upgrade or downgrade his level of spirituality. To exist on a non-registered plane would be simply an impossibility. Growth is achieved through repeating practices until life experience shows said growth or until such a time of that spirit to be approved on one of the four levels of heaven. Existence will be judged based upon a rating system created by a council of elders, peers of creation, if you will. Ten governors in each sector will be assigned to determine the value of each molecule of dimethyltryptamine or through the cerebral spine in all living things according to its time and existence. Reincarnate will be the order until spirituality reaches a level of equivalence to be measured. Therefore, no living creature will enter heaven without the proper level of spiritual vibrance and no spirit can be self-terminating. Physicality can be subject to termination while spiritual value will simply regress. All pets and lesser spirits shall reincarnate on a material plane until such spirit attains the degree of equivalence of spirituality of the humanoid species or higher. Pets are important for the companionship of mankind, yet they are not necessary in their higher planes because companionship is not necessarily the issue where the growth of spirit is the main focus. In each of the heavenly realms, the spirits are equal in level. Could you imagine a place where animals and people are equal? Not likely. Ultimately, they will just fight for superiority and or nourishment. Spirits will consist of energy. Anything with energy shall possess a certain measure of spirituality. The level of energy within the organism shall determine the length of the cycle. As the organism matures, so shall the resident spirit. It shall be the divine responsibility and reverent compulsion of the angels to assist spiritual growth. An angel's spiritual growth is determined by the measure of assistance given in the cycle of angels. All things shall come together for the benefit of the progression of creation, creations of God as well as creations of the mother of all nature. Hello and welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that. I enjoyed making it. 
Now, we're at a very important chapter, the Big Bang, the creation of the universe. Now, I had a very interesting conversation with a friend of mine, and she was very upset with me because in this chapter, it describes a situation where God is having a relationship, an intimate relationship with his woman, Mother Nature. Now, you would think that that would be fine since they are the first stellar couple in the universe and God created her for that re reason. But some people are so dogmatic. And she told me that I was going to hell because God was getting busy. That's what she told me. So, let me tell you why I wrote a chapter about God getting busy. It's because of the universal principle of correspondence. Correspondence di dictates that as below, so above. Like I said before, we can figure out what is going on in heaven by looking at the way things go on in here. In my last chapter, it describes how Egypt, old Egypt, at one particular time was an image of heaven. The principles and the way things that work in Egypt at that time were the same principles that are in heaven. Now, creation is what we're talking about. We know how humans create and procreate. We know how animals would do, do it. We know how the birds and the bees and the trees. Well, guess what? So does God. The thing is, you have to ask yourself, if the greatest power and the creator got together with, the, with his female counterpart to create, what would that offspring be? Well, I can tell you what it probably would not be. It probably wouldn't be baby Jesus. I mean, that's a wonderful and beautiful thought, but it probably wouldn't be baby Jesus. It will probably be something more dynamic, magnificent, and impossible for us to do. And there we have it, the creation of the universe. And for that young lady get, that got mad at me because I said, God procreates. I have news for you. Last week, science came back with a magnificent discovery via the Thomas Webb Telescope. This telescope is the most sophisticated telescope ever created. It's, it's tuned to, to, to record things that we have never, ever seen in our lives. This, I'll get into the particulars of the telescope itself once I get the particulars. Right now, I don't have time to go into that. However, let me tell you what this telescope has discovered. It has discovered that not only was there one big bang roughly 15 billion years ago, but it has discovered that big bangs have been going on ever since then. And that is why the universe is expanding. The same big bang that created our universe is steadily creating others. Which means God and Mother Nature is still doing their thing. Mother and nature, Mother Nature and God are still creating universes. Now, get ready for chapter four, the Big Bang. Chapter four, the Big Bang. Though angels did exist, they were not to be the counterpart to God. The mother of all nature was 
God and a mother's spirits were filled to the extreme. He made her just for him, and without form or face or vocabulary, she knew he was lonely. She, who had never existed, felt loneliness too, as her feelings of loneliness were suddenly quenched. If only she had hands, she could reach out. If only she had tears, she could have cried out. She felt the center and him all around her. He was everywhere. She could feel his presence even within her, even though she too was without mass or form. Though God conceived her, she too could only exist within the matrix in the mind of God. She could not see it, but she could feel the barrier between the two, longing to be on the outside with him. Imagine being created to share the ultimate feelings with God as the two stood still for a while, unaware of how to address one another. Other than angels, he had never engaged a supreme being, and she had never existed. Because he could tell the future, and she could not. It would be her that was the most curious. All questions and curiosities were in fact unnecessary, for both could understand the other without words at all. After him, God knew what her first unmet need would be. Answers. Answers to many questions she knew not of. Then God let out a burst of information for her to receive that would save much time, time indeed. You shall begin to understand particles and molecules and necessary things to create projects and objects and mysteries. I will teach you holograms and kilograms and monograms. I shall show you a matrix and a day trip and how to play tricks. God Almighty. He taught her algorithms and simple rhythms how to get to know Him. Mother Nature found herself on the inside of a particle matrix made up of invisible superstring lattices. In each cross pattern was a binary code ready to receive information. Information that came in the form of waves, and these waves was a combination of all information that could possibly be known. Once Mother Nature observed the waves, they began to break down into discernible patterns. Mother Nature could not understand why she was on the inside of the matrix and her beloved companion was on the outside. God then said, Concentrate your mind on me. Just like magic, God came to be. Not only was he within the matrix, he was the matrix. God's appearance was just what her mind imagined him to be. Then God proclaimed, And so now, it is law. Our universe is mental. All is mind. All is mental. Mother Nature and God were now both physical and non-physical forms in the universe. A paradox. All of the poems and all of the love songs that will ever be written burst out into the matrix to be discovered by all of the soul writers and poems forever. Words were not needed to express the depth of emotions the two share. Their rhythm and vibration saturated all space, causing all the angels' wings to quiver and thrust. As the angels' hearts began to fully understand the power and meaning of true, unconditional love, God held her hands and said, This place shall forever need love. In this place they'll forever be loved. 
for it is only love that gives all this a reason to coexist. From the spiritual to the physical, they then form lips and hands and hips. Not a space for a molecule was left between them. The love the two made could only be made by they, them. As their form and essence gathered onto them, all particles and molecules were gathered therein, and just when it became no more room, all particles and matter burst into an indescribable, unconceivable, non-recreatable boom. So extraordinary was this event that all forms of matter in this, the new dimension were propelled forward while in the ethereal realm, reality began to traverse in reverse. The corporeal became the first creation of the union. In this realm, all things that consist of solid matter will exist. Thus, the Big Bang blew all matter of celestial components to all parts of physical space thus creating what we now call the stars and the heavenly bodies and all the states of conscious realities. Amazingly, this astronomical event had no effect on the other spirits that existed because the two were on what would now become known as alternative dimensions. In fact, there was suddenly a reality where a multitude of dimensions existed simultaneously. Four such dimensions were specifically designed as a private residence for the omnipotent newlyweds. All other dimensions, their love child. There, they would spend the rest of forever together while the two maintained the universes and the galaxies seamlessly, simultaneously, ubiquitously. <laughs> Chapter 5 Heavenly Bodies Heavenly bodies, called planets, moons, and stars, reach throughout the many realms of the inner cerebrum of God. Like stars spanning in the vast void, they reach further and further to fill all space. From the mind of God was given to the stars a soul equal to the size of the heavenly bodies they occupied. Their spiritual energy were the magnitude that could match and fill each of the great luminaries that they burst life into. From these giant spheres, radiant flares reach thousands of miles into space. Gas giants were also filled with spiritual potency that could be seen from one galaxy to another. Though this could not feel a fraction of a percent of the distance between the eyes of God. The mind of God reached everywhere. Beyond the mind of God will exist nothing, absolute. Within the mind of God, the bigger the object, the bigger the spark that radiated its being and its brilliance. The stars that were the most spiritual were the stars that burned the most hot. This heat spawned by the primordial bang and burst and split molecules into nuclear fission. This fission would keep all life in the void of flame. This consciousness would then compress and reshape into forms of energetic radiant substantialities. All this was not to say that the mind of God was completely void but rather rich with endless potentiality and an endless imagination to fill it. 
the universal law of polarity would insist that the cooler bodies were equally as energized because the coolest souls ran slower and deeper. In the souls of the spheres with the same passion of God, and even more from the feminine, the almost, as the mother of all nature, would become affectionately known. Be not confused. The mind of God is infinite. Outside of the mind of God, there is nothing. Do not attribute human qualities unto the structure of God, such as arms, legs, torsos, and shoulders, nor emotions such as fear, or anger, or jealousy, or vanity. Human traits are non-ascribable and non-imputable. Human attributes are beneath consideration and cannot conceptualize the ubiquitous continuity of the Supreme Being. To consider the creation of mankind in the physical image of the Creator is simply beyond unintelligible. There are no words in any vocabulary of any beings anywhere that have the capacity to describe the indescribable. This level of understanding is futile. With the creation of the material universe came the creation of linear time. Before, there was no need for time when there were no objects moving about in space. No motion and no rhythm, never a thing in the same place at the same time or another. All molecular structures are in a specific place at a specific time. Nothing in the physical realm is random. All things in all places are assigned by the minds that have the ability to manipulate them. This manipulation is controlled by the intensity of the vibration in the minds of the observer. The stronger the spirit, the greater the capacity to control matter. All things with spirits have the ability to observe. For example, the more you desire, the more you will be willing to obtain. Likewise, as it was stated by Saldana, the most popular Buddha, removal of desire shall result in a loss of desire. The greater the desire is diminished, the lesser the motivation to obtain such. Don't be